Well, good evening, neighbors. Uh, we are here for Forum to talk about e-bikes. If you ask anyone, uh, uh, I think there are two topics that are swirling about in our community, cannabis shops and e-bikes. There's plenty of other issues, so we're going to tackle one of them. We're going to do a little bit as if we're having a debate to try to be rigid in using our time wisely. There have been dozens and dozens of questions submitted, lots of issues that we want to uh, share the views of our neighbors uh, with our elected officials who have uh, graciously uh, agreed to join us. Uh, Sean Abreu is, uh, is here, council member, and Gail Brewer, our council member. We are waiting for the state delegation to arrive from Albany. They should be here in a moment or two, and we'll bring them on as soon as they are uh, able. Uh, ground rules, we're going to do a little bit of an intro and let each of our elected officials share their big perspective uh, on the issues. If you talk more than five uh, minutes, we have a hook that will come out and grab you. Uh, then we're going to run through a lot of questions, and at the very end, we'll let you say a few words to conclude. I urge you to be brief and to focus on what we're trying to focus on. What are the legislative answers, the legislative proposals that you believe are valid, that you believe are valid to address the issues of so many Upper West Siders regarding e-bikes and all the associated uh, bike type devices uh, that are shooting all around our community. I don't think we're at the denial stage anymore. We have a problem. We are seeking answers from our elected officials. Sean Abreu, would you please make uh, your opening remarks uh, with our thanks? Yeah, good evening. Thank you, Steve, and thank you to the association uh, for, for having me tonight. Uh, and I wanna thank you for the opportunity to speak on pedestrian safety and some of the e-bike regulations that have been floated by our different legislatures. I am Sean Abreu and I represent part of the Upper West Side now. I think everyone here cares about pedestrian safety. Until earlier this year, I served as the chair of the Committee on State and Federal Legislation. And in that role, I passed several legis pieces of legislation to make streets safe for, pe for pedestrians who were endangered by cars, right? I was the sponsor of a home rule that expanded the operation of traffic cameras to catch cars that were putting pedestrians at risk. And I was the sponsor of a home rule supporting Sammy's law, which would give the city control over our own speed limits. I think that expanding the use of e-bikes over cars is part of how we will eventually make our city safer for pedestrians. But we need to have some road rules for our e-bikes as well. I think a lot of us have had our own close call with e-bikes that aren't following the usual traffic rules or where the biker isn't paying attention. We've also seen folks on e-bikes put themselves in danger because they feel like they don't have to follow some of the rules that cars follow. And I worry that there's going to be hostility toward biking if we don't set some expectations, enforce some basic rules, and make sure we have the infrastructure to keep streets safe for pedestrians and bikers alike. Late last year, I became one of over 30 sponsors of Councilmember Holden's bill, Intro 606, which would require registration of all e-bikes. It's not a perfect bill by any means, which is why I held off on sponsoring for as long as I did. But I had a lot of conversation with constituents, some of you here in this room, and I realized that there wasn't a lot of opportunity for the council to have a serious conversation about e-bike safety. And a hearing for this bill would be our chance to hear from folks on both sides formally and get feedback on how we can make the bill better or implement some other solution. You need 34 sponsors to just get this bill heard. And I got on this bill because at a minimum, we should be having this conversation. At a minimum, we should be having a hearing on these bills. But tonight is also a great chance for us to hear from you, talk to each other, get into some questions, and get into why this is such a thorny problem. Thank you all for joining and submitting questions. Thanks very much to you, uh, Councilman. Gail Brewer, please uh, uh, provide us your uh, sort of big picture guidance on this issue. Thank you very much. And this is a huge issue, not just for the West Side, but I think citywide. Um, and I want to thank Judge Wang, who's head of the Midtown Community Justice Center, because just recently he had a forum, which I co-sponsored with Senator 
Hoyleman Siegel called Reimagining Micromobility Safety in New York. And it's all on the website. I urge you to look at it. It's not just a video, it's also in writing. But a lot of ideas came out of there, which I will mention in a minute. But that was a thoughtful suggestion about how to have a conversation and try to come up with something specific. Also, I have convened the Upper West Side Micromobility Task Force with many of you just to have in the room both people from the Deliveristas, for instance, as well as people who are really concerned about bicycles in general. Um, I think uh, one of the main issues is stay off the damn sidewalks. That is something that we can all agree on. Um, I've also uh, been to many of the migrant shelters and tried to give information with Community Board 4 on French, English, and Spanish uh, about what the rules of the road are. Um, I introduced a bill to require the DOT to develop a safety course to cover safe and lawful operation of bicycles, scooters, everything to do with e-mobility. And it would require the delivery companies, those apps, to ensure that their workers complete the course and provide required safety equipment like clothing, headlights, and taillights. I've also introduced uh, a resolution in Albany because I am supportive of at least uh, uh, certainly the Horman Siegel bill, which talks about the licensing and insurance. And I think all the other bills in Albany make sense. Everybody who's introduced one from Kruger to Jennifer Rakama, et cetera, need to have uh, those bills passed. Because I have to say, unfortunately, those are ways that we can be effective. That is where the action is in terms of legislation. I also supported, uh, introduced a resolution to support the Commercial E-Bike Licensing Act. That's the one I'm talking about because it's the Department of Motor Vehicles that has to license. Um, I also wanna say that some of the ideas that we need to follow up on, we need speed regulation devices. Um, the city bikes have them and the, uh, all bikes that are e-mobile mobility need to have that. We need more bike lanes, we need to be protected. We need to move the parking spots closest to an intersection because what happens is, and you heard this a lot from the conference that I went to, the bikes get on the sidewalk right at the entrance to the sidewalk where the restaurant or wherever they're going is in the middle. And that's a problem. So we have to find a way that the, that does not happen, that last mile as it's called. Um, we need to have fees on the companies to be able to provide this infrastructure uh, projects. We need to have the apps to share the data with the city of New York. Routes, speed, wages, hours worked, and all should be on the open data portal. Right now, believe it or not, the city of New York does not have the same communication that the apps do with the delivery workers. Um, and then I think, you know, we also need to have those companies like GoPuff that are now requiring a certain time frame to delivery should not be able to do so. A long time ago they did it, we stopped it, and now they're at it again. Then it's outrageous. 20 minutes or less should not be part of their uh, operation. Uh, we obviously need more enforcement for NYPD. I mean, like others, I go to the uh, monthly meetings and it sounds like mopeds are being confiscated and some tickets are being given out, but never enough. I think the 10th Avenue two-way bike line is working to get people off the sidewalk, but we have to have more discussion about that. We need to have bike traffic control devices. Obviously, that's something that is available through Albany, but also through DOT. And we need radar speed signs for bikes. The Parks Department piloted them in Prospect Park and Central Park, um, and we need them there. There's a lot of discussion about the apps. Why can't they do this? I'd love to have them, for instance, figure out how the algorithms don't hurt the delivery people. They're told if you don't deliver, you're going to be penalized uh, because you're not getting there fast enough. That's outrageous. And also, when they got the raise, there's some discussion, which was a good thing, that they are not getting the support for getting tips, is put at the very, very end. So these apps need to be curtailed in many different ways. I'm not saying we can do it legislatively, locally, but it's something that should be on the table. Um, so I think generally it's the rules of the road, it's public safety, it's finding a way to curb those apps quite a bit, and it's also finding a way in Albany to do licensing and insurance. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, while we wait for, um, while, while we wait for the state legislators to join us, I want to ask the two of you in the council to share with you 
there has been one question that has been submitted more than any other concern for this forum, and that is the West 71st Street pedestrian plaza issue. Uh, I've had a number of, of, of questions submitted. Susan from the South Pierre Tenants Association on West 71st Street asked, is the plaza no longer under consideration for any e-bike related installation? Lynn from 70th and Broadway and Malika from West 81st, 85th Street say it's time to require high rise buildings to provide accessible fireproof safe places for uh, okay. charging. I can see uh, you let me, let me finish, let me just give you all the, the, our neighbor Greg says, if it's going forward at 71st Street, how is this not a violation of public safety? And who's gonna take responsibility for injuries? And the last question comes from Katina on West 71st Street. She asked, despite tremendous community opposition by residents and CB7 to this unsafe proposal, as she calls it, why is the city continuing to consider this site? Okay, so I those are five that. questions. Thank I you. Can, I can answer that question because it's in my district. And I think I know all the people who asked the question and I've been asking it also. That is not a good location. It is too crowded. It's above a subway uh, and nobody wants it. I think even those in the city staff people don't want it. So I have been, I think we're making lots of progress because we do need charging stations. People should understand that. I'm very supportive of the delivery workers and the work that they do. There's a group called Pop Wheels, which I've mentioned to Katrina and others. Pop Wheels is uh, out of Brooklyn. They have Vending machines is the best way I can describe it. Brooklyn Navy Yard, and also there's one on the Lower East Side that has been installed. The mayor is very supportive. Um, as we speak, I know that Pop Wheels and the Department of Transportation are interested in finding an alternative location to the one that has been described and is not liked. Um, I'm not going to get into specifics because I don't want people to say, it's not a good idea, but it could be under a bridge. It could be under a highway. It could be anywhere because what happens is the delivery person goes, it takes seconds. You put your battery in, the old battery, and a new battery pops out. It's a one I've been down to see and test it, and the delivery people support it. The city supports it. Pop Wheel supports it. We just need to find a location that has the appropriate dynamics that a vending machine is a huge thing. Um, and so we're excited about it. And nobody would gather around it because it would be drop in and drop out. So that's where we're at. And I don't think 70th Street is going to happen. I can't say for sure. I'm not the mayor. But that's the most up-to-date information I can give you. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. I appreciate your straightforward uh, response there. Obviously, it is an issue of concern to very, very many people. So we look to you to update us when it is, something is finalized. Uh, welcoming uh, uh, State Senator Brad Hoyle and Siegel. He's uh, just been parachuted in from Albany. We appreciate you uh, you being here. We're running this slightly like a debate with a little more control of time because there's so many questions. If you could please, Senator, um, share with us your, your sort of big picture uh, uh, here on, on this challenge that we face uh, because you've been engaged on this and I do caution you on lengthy presentations. There is a digital hook that can reach through the internet and grab you. So uh, unmute, please, and uh, please okay. uh, join us. Good to see everyone. Good to see you, council member. I know the assembly woman will be on if she's not on already. Uh, and I just wanted to say hello. Thank you, Steve, for organizing this. Um, and my good, amazing colleague, Evan Lieberman. Uh, as you know, I represent the west side of Manhattan from Christopher up to 103. And really, um, the overarching view, the 360 view that I that I have uh, from Albany is that once we're finished with this God darn damn budget um, in the next week, I hope um, we're going to reorient our uh, focus um, up in Albany on passing some legislation that addresses a number of the problems that we're, we'll be discussing tonight. Uh, we know we've seen that incredible growth in cycling, 94% uh, uh, over the last decade, and the number of app companies. There are over 120,000 people working for the four largest delivery apps. Um, 
78% of the deliveries are conducted by uh, vehicles other than cars. And we know that the food app delivery companies use algorithms that incentivize uh, dangerous, reckless behavior on the part of the drivers just so they can get paid and provide for their families. If the workers fail to deliver the food quickly, they can be locked out of the app. Councilmember Brewer and Assemblywoman Rosenthal and I and Councilmember Abreu um, all uh, co-hosted a forum uh, a couple of months ago through the Manhattan Justice Center where we discussed some of these issues. There were breakout sessions, a number of solutions were proposed. Some of them uh, are in line with what we're working on in Albany. Um, so I've got five bills that I carry with a number of my colleagues, including Assemblywoman uh, Rosenthal. Uh, one is e-bike licensing, uh, which would require the registration and licensure of e-bikes and scooters used for commercial purposes. Um, two is an insurance requirement requiring delivery companies to provide liability insurance for all delivery workers. That is for the reason that, God forbid, a delivery worker hurts someone while delivering food, that victim can be compensated. Uh, Assemblywoman Rosenthal and I carry a bill on hit and runs. Uh, it would increase penalties for hit and run bike cyclists cyclists to match the penalty for motor vehicle uh, operators. Um, we know that e-bikes don't thankfully kill or injure at many people as car, cars by a long run, but we need to ensure that when an e-bike injures a pedestrian, the driver remains at the scene. Uh, fourth is a bill that we carry to register mopeds. It would require mopeds, gasoline powered vehicles to be registered at the point of sale. Um, this came out of a meeting, again, that uh, the, the two council members and the assembly member and I participated in. A number of you, uh, particularly folks from Chelsea, a different part of our district, uh, convened with the delivery app companies. Um, mopeds, the, most of the mopeds we see on our streets do not have license plates. And many of those instances, moped shops take advantage of the new arrivals and don't properly inform them of the law. Um, and by requiring mopeds to be registered at the point of sale, I think we can A, ensure moped drivers can be held accountable and B, uh, make certain that moped shops can't take advantage of these unsuspecting drivers. Uh, another bill, I believe it's our fifth one, uh, would regulate dangerous algorithms. Uh, we can't miss the force for the trees, as they say. Uh, so much of the dangerous behavior we experience is driven by these exploitative algorithms that incentivize speed. Uh, so we have a bill that would allow the state uh, or workers themselves to sue employers that who uh, endanger people through these algorithms. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, our Midtown Community Justice Center uh, summit on e-bike safety focused on micromobility um, issues. And we had lawyers, academics, urban planners, deliveryistas, government agencies, industry experts, and others. And the conversations really affirmed a lot of our existing proposals, but highlighted a few new areas of policy making, including greater regulation for the app companies, better street infrastructure, and stronger worker protections. I'm working on a bill right now um, that uh, I hope one of uh, you know my colleagues uh, will carry. Uh, uh, her name is Linda, and uh, we're going to work on it together. I hope that will. Um, require the delivery app companies to make a contribution to their use of public space uh, in the form of a tax. So that's my roundup of legislation. I got to be honest with you, Steve, and everyone here, not every one of these bills is going to see the light of day. Uh, anyone who knows anything about Albany um, knows that, you know, we, we give each bill our best shot. Right now, the Senate is working on assembling, uh, each senator assembles his or her priority bills for the remainder of session. Remember, our session ends in early June these days, so we don't have a lot of time, but we want to identify what are the community's top priorities and 
prioritize accordingly for our legislation in Albany. We can't get every bill across the finish line in both houses, but I'm hopeful we can get a number of them. All right, thank you, thank you, Senator. We're gonna we're gonna move to some of these questions, and uh, I, I, I'm feeling the I'm feeling the electronic hook right now. Uh, thank you. I'm glad it was transmitted successfully to you. Okay, so these are a couple of questions that we're putting together. Mel from West 79th Street is seeing many bikes ridden on the sidewalk, and he wonders about having tracking devices. He wonders about having tracking devices on all bikes, all types, as City Bike does. Linda on West 72nd Street and Michael from 74th both want to see if a law can be enacted requiring every delivery person to wear a bib with an ID number, as it was when delivery people worked directly for restaurants per council member Brewer's bill uh, back uh, a few uh, moons ago. Ken Coughlin, who's a CB7 member, is concerned that whatever is done should not be on the burden of the delivery people, not on the deliveristas, but the app firms that are employing them. Who wants to uh, uh, respond to uh, any or uh, all of those uh, those thoughts? Steve, I'll take a, a stab at it. I think that, you know, at a minimum, um, I am on Bob Holden's bill and there are aspects of it that I like and, and there are also aspects of it that are also in the Albany uh, Brad Hoyerman version of the bill, except his only applies to, to, to commercial. Um, so, you know, I think that every e-bike, scooter, or motorized vehicle that is not required to be registered with the DMV be registered with DOT and have a plate affixed to them with an identification number, right? Um, logistically, this bill would require DOT to bring a new licensing program online and would also require that DOT enforcement and NYPD work together to enforce the rules of the law. For me, it makes no difference if it's DOT or DMV, personally. I just want there to be, at a minimum, an ID system with an identification number. I want to be very clear here that this bill would not affect using a traditional bike in any way. If you don't have any electric assist or any electric anything, this bill would not be impacting you. This wouldn't apply to standard bikes, and it would come at and it would not come at a high cost either. Registration would be low to no cost and would require that cyclist have this have this information. What this bill would do is create a layer of accountability for cyclists that are capable of going up to 60 miles per hour on electric bikes. I mean, these are motorcycles at that point. I wholeheartedly support micro mobility and I recognize the importance of encouraging people to choose greener, climate friendly alternatives as their primary transit options. But if we removed all cars of New York City tomorrow, we would still want to have e-bikes registered and affixed with plates to ensure that proper riding guidelines are being followed, right? From an accountability standpoint, having an identification is very important. There's often hidden runs, right? If, it, if a camera captures someone's uh, you know, visible plate affixed to the e-bike, I mean, then we'll be able to you know, have some, a better accountability measure. Um, I don't think this would be a magic wand, however, um, I think enforcement is a big issue here that can contribute here as well. But I, I've heard from constituents loud and clear that they want to see plates affixed to both commercial and personal use. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Um, for those of our neighbors who are on YouTube, uh, if you refresh, you should probably be able to uh, chat. Uh, I think there was some technical glitch that might have prevented you. But if you refresh, you may be. Neil Burson is a uh, uh, director of our organization and uh, is one of the people behind the West 90s uh, Neighborhood Association. Neil, you've got a question. I do indeed. Thank you for recognizing me, Steve. So um, I congratulate all of you for coming together and individually taking this task on. It's very important to our community. I think you all know that the community cares greatly about this issue. Uh, so thanks for doing that and moving along and telling people what is about to happen in the various city council and up in Albany. That uh, help is on the way. And that's a very important message, I think, to deliver. Uh, my concern is in the enforcement arena. Um, is the NYPD equipped with sufficient resources, manpower and financial resources to handle the enforcement uh, job that will be required here. 
Or should we alternatively be considering another city agency, perhaps an existing one or a newly creating one to handle the load uh, for that enforcement and any adjudication mechanism that becomes associated with it? What are your views about that? Well, I mean, from my perspective, I would love the cops to do more, I have to say, because they are the eyes and ears. The problem, as I understand it, is that they are afraid that if uh, they're unfortunately mostly in cars, it would be great if there were more on bicycles, but they're afraid that if they chase people that other uh, casualties could take place. So that's what they tell you. Um, I do think that, you know, one of the challenges is sometimes you'll see cops you'll see somebody riding on the sidewalk. That doesn't seem to me like a chase situation. And you still don't see anybody stopping them, um, ticketing them or whatever is appropriate. Other agencies, Neil, I don't know. I mean, I am up to here with smoke shops, as you know. I closed one. I'm trying to close more. And there are about 12 different agencies involved, and we still can't get them closed. Uh, the mayor's office did come up with you know, some kind of a new agency, which I haven't seen uh, the light of day yet, but something to pro supposedly to look at this issue because the mayor's getting a lot of heat on it also. I think that the, uh, I would agree that we, you know, I did pass a law, as Steve said, years ago, one restaurant has to be somewhere listed on your hat or your, you know, your vest or something. It's harder to do now because you're working for many different apps. But if there was some way of, you know, on the clothing locally, and then I still support the Department of Motor Vehicles, I must admit, because I want, I don't think DOT is going to do anything. I'd like to see the agency that traditionally does licensing to do it and also include insurance, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, but the, and that's why I support uh, uh, the bill that uh, you heard earlier about from Brad Hoyle and Siegel. But what I'm saying is, I do think some kind of identification might also help the cops, not to mention the rest of us, when we are uh, trying to identify who the person is who's on the sidewalk, going too fast, et cetera, et cetera. So even in the interim clothing, I have a bill that says the apps have to provide clothing. Even that, even though they're working for different companies, could have some kind of an ID on it. I think we're we're all, at least I am trying to get to the place that they are licensed and insured. That would be my goal, however. Thank you. Uh, let me jump in here with a couple of comments and questions from people who have written in. Um, Judy, who lives at 96th Street, is thinking that motorized bikes like cars should be driven with cars in the roadbed, leaving non-motorized ones for the bike lanes. Now, we've been joined here by uh, Renee, who had submitted a, uh, a question. As most of us know, Renee was shockingly hit by an e-bike in May. And one of the things she had talked to me about is uh, restricting bike lanes and uh, why aren't e-bikes restricted to bike lanes and are legally allowed to ride in the street with cars? That's something that needs to be addressed. Rob from Central Park West asks, what about an enforced speed limit for motorized bike? David Zellman says cars have a 25 mile per hour speed limit. So why not bikes? What about those uh, those issues? Who would want to uh, respond? I can, I can tackle that. My understanding, and, and please correct me, Gail, if I'm wrong, but I think the e-bikes are subject to the same rules of the road as cars. Um, you can't go, you know, if, you, if you're electric, if you're motorized, you can't go beyond a certain speed limit. I would not support uh, having e-bikes be on the same road. I think we have to expand our bike and, and micromobility infrastructure. Um, but I, I do I, I am very sensitive to the security concerns by many of our constituents on the Upper West Side. And that's why I'm pushing for, you know, licensing. I'm pushing for insurance. I'm pushing for registration. Uh, so I think that also expanding our camera infrastructure, um, I, that's something I, I would I would be happy to support having cameras on on e-bike lanes. Once assuming that we pass this bill, that way we can determine um you know, who are the bad actors and, and there for there to be an accountability mechanism for it. But I don't think they should be in the same road. I think it should be separated. I, I just want to make a point here to convey what I am hearing from our community. This is not an issue which we feel people are patient about as the legislative process moves slowly or that there are disagreements among elected officials about whose bill answers more of the problems. People are scared who are walking on the street 
and in the sidewalk and the numbers of people injured is significant and undercounted and little methodology for counting properly and sharing so that even the cops don't know. So this is another, and I, I know it's the, it's the Upper West Side, there aren't two views, there's 22 views on every <laughs> issue. And we, stip, we stipulate that. But this is not a casual topic I sense from people that we wanna have people attend conferences and read papers about. Uh, there are times when action is called for by the public to the people they rely on to do things. And uh, Senator, I know you got a lot of bills there and you got a lovely person sitting with you that is wonderful to see, but we got to protect her and us all, and especially those of us who are seniors. So you got to get on it up there in Albany and make it happen, not chat about it. I'm yeah, sorry. I, I couldn't agree more. And I, I know I see somebody woman Rosenthal on and she knows as well as I do that we're we're going to work together and prioritize our bills so we can, you know, it's one thing to pass a bill in the assembly, but you got to pass it in the Senate, obviously, and get it to the governor. And she's got to sign it. And Linda and I both have experienced, you know, one house bills or vetoes. So we've got a lot of work to do between now and um, the end of session. And, and it's going to be an int intense, but I would love Steve to get to perhaps sit down with this group, show you our bills and help you uh, help you help us prioritize what you want us. Absolutely. Say, let, let, let us know. We will share it with everyone connected. Yeah. Uh, Assembly member, welcome. I know you've uh, parachuted also in from uh, Albany a little I bit did. later. If you could, uh, if you wanted to just take maybe two minutes or so and give a perspective on the big issue of, of that concerns that we're into some of the details, but the big issue is, how do we fix this mess, which is threatening a lot of people and making a lot of people scared to be on the sidewalk even? All right, I understand. So hi everyone, uh, Assembly Member Linda Rosenthal. I represent Upper West Side, parts of Hell's Kitchen, and I'm chair of the Housing Committee, which is um, deep in negotiations, because as all of you know, the budget is late. Once it's late, there's no like real deadline, except we have Passover, so maybe that will be it. But, um, so we're very busy with that. But in terms of this topic, first, thank you, Steve, for uh, putting this together and all the members for being on here um, tonight. Um, I understand and I agree. People feel like they're taking their lives in their hands uh, when they cross the street. And this was true even before the rise of e-bikes and scooters especially seniors, people with baby carriages were colliding into regular old bikes. So I, I had had safety forums with the local um, precinct and the parks department, transportation to discuss intersections. And those days seem kind of quaint compared to the complex and growing problem that is occurring on our streets today. And one of the big reasons for the issue is the food delivery apps, which are now dominant and Grubhub, DoorDash, Uber Eats, they've created a dangerous cycle for all New Yorkers using our streets because back in the day, delivery workers would be employed by a restaurant. They had to wear vests reflecting their place of employment. If you were hit by a bike or you saw someone running a red light, you could call the restaurant to report what was happening. And uh, that old fashioned but efficient option doesn't exist because people work for the apps now. They, uh, one app, multiple apps, and they're compelled by the system set up by the apps to work harder and faster in order to keep up with the platform's relentless algorithms and the unrealistic delivery pace. So you are rewarded if you are quick you are punished if you are not as quick. And that often means if you obey all the rules of the road, you will be either deactivated by the app, customers may complain and they will take all that into account and just get rid of you. I mean, the app thinks, yeah. I can't, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Good. Re yeah. Report, uh, I think we've stipulated as I said before, we've got a problem. And okay, I, I, I've missed all account, of that. We're counting, we're counting on you 
uh, to to legislatively address some of these issues. Okay. What do you think? What do you think can be done in the big picture to to fix this stuff? And can you get the assembly uh, to support it? Well, you know, we've had a groundswell of uh, consternation about the cannabis situation. And so we are addressing that in the budget. And the same dynamic can exist over the e-bike situation. And, you know, a lot of us hear plenty about the e-bikes. And we have the stats, we have the stories, we have everything needed to push it forward. I think it would be great if people came up to Albany um, in support of these bills. I think it'd be great if you had like a day of action, whether it's an email day of action, a phone call day of action, and we can help you, you know, guide you to how to, where to focus. But I think that would empower people and they could get their story across because of course, Brad and I are going to push really hard. And, and a lot of our colleagues, you know, have bills or are on our bills and deeply understand this. So we just have to motivate and elevate the problem so that in in the time left in Albany after the budget, this becomes one of the top priorities. Let me share with you a couple of comments and questions from people who have written in. Carol from West 81st Street asks, will there be new laws to require e-bikes to carry insurance? Jay Adolph, who's a CB7 member, says the state legislature needs to pass a law requiring registration and insurance for e-bikes. But the city council has to first ask that of the legislature. Dan from uh, West 81st Street, my block associate, wonders why all other businesses that have vehicles or bikes that their employees are, are using, they have to have insurance. Why not people using e-bikes? So that's just three different people digging into what they see needs to be done legislatively. Yes, yeah, so so that is because uh, quirks in the law, they're not included in, in the insurance law. And I think Brad and I have a, a bill to, um, to change that. And, um, and we have a bill, yes, we have a bill requiring delivery apps to take out insurance on their workers. And as maybe Brad explained, we have a constituent who was hit by a delivery worker on an e-bike and he ended up in the hospital for months with severe injuries. And of course, there was no one to pay him, pay the hospital bill or for his pain and suffering. So that's why we have that bill. And I think that has a very good chance. Although I must say that all the apps have hired lobbyists and they are trying to push their point of view, which is, oh, we can't do anything. But that's why the people need to um, let me ask. Up. Let me ask our council members, has the council done everything that they need to do to ask of the state to now uh, come up with legislation? Is there something missing from the city council to move this all forward? Well, we could do more resolutions, Steve. We, I have, I, I think I have three for some of these bills, but we could do more resolutions. I don't know if we need home rule, as was indicated earlier. I think they can pass them on their own. It's always good to have the city council supporting and that's when you sit down with Brad and Linda and you have some focus as to what you want to focus on, then we could have even more focus on the resolutions that we do. Um, but that's how we work it. Unless there's a home rule needed, sometimes the state will say over a million people this will apply to. And then we need a uh, might need a home rule. Yeah, over, over a million means only New York City, yeah. although other areas are starting to get there. So um, we, we up the number of residents. Uh, Whatever, yeah. But but we, we might need a home rule, and in that case, I guess there needs to be a committee meeting and a bill and all yeah. that. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, if we need that, that can be done quickly. But I know there are schedules, and sometimes... Well, hopefully it works out because there's just about five, six weeks left in session. So um, I think the insurance for the apps is um, in a good spot. Um, and I think I think the other bill I have, which has a lot of a lot of interest about um, not letting the apps use the algorithms and deactivating workers. 
um, take away the, the motive for speeding and not obeying the laws. So would, uh, Brad, would there be a bill provision that says there has to be data collected that would indicate the number of uh, uh, incidents and that the NYPD and all that, because, because Judy, a 30 year resident of Lincoln Square asked, how can the cops, the hardworking cops, capture more accurate data regarding incidents with bikes and e-bikes and mopeds? Miriam on the Upper West Side, how about creating a category legislative requ requiring the reporting of injuries to the NYPD for people hit by bikes of all kinds. It's currently being treated dismissively, not documented, not a serious issue. What do you say, Brad? Yeah, no, I, I agree strongly uh, on data collection. You cannot manage what you don't measure, as they say. And uh, this is an, an example. Uh, we do get some data from, from New York City DOT. I think the council members would agree it's not enough. It's not in real time by any form. And uh, it is uh, periodic. Um, there is a bill that one of our colleagues carries, Assembly Member Alex Boras, on data collection and distribution um, that would um, require uh, NYPD to uh, to to categorize e-bike uh, data uh, when reporting. Uh, the NYPD, as I understand it, records data but lumps it together as mopeds, e-bikes, and e-scooters. So we'd like them to disaggregate that. And there is legislation, which uh, I am a co-sponsor. I hope we can get that moving in both houses. Let me just say the council members have been really valuable to the work we do through their resolutions, through their press uh, appearances and comments on on smoke shops for example i mean um you know and we're, we're we're acting on what we hear from our local representatives up in albany i hope the same is going to be true of e-bikes you know we are also though it has to be understood in some cases swimming upstream we've got got big money behind the delivery apps and lobbyists, as Assembly Member Rosenthal said, who are going to fight us tooth and nail. And we also have the rest of the state, which may not view this problem mm -hmm. the same, and other parts of the city where many of the workers originate. And they have a different perspective on e-bike delivery ISTAs because in many instances, they are their constituents. So there are a lot of factors here at play here. But I think we have right on our side and we do have unfortunate stories that people can come up and tell and yeah. i think that's very important and very persuasive yeah and i love the idea of a lobby day by the people in albany on this issue yep. i think steve the other good news is the delivery folks as we meet with them on a regular basis um, they too want much of what has been outlined. So it's it's a that's another group of supporters that may be not recognized here tonight, but um, you know, safety, less onerous app discussions, and the list goes on. So I, I think we should not forget that they too will be an ally. I, I just want to mention to you that this uh, issue, uh, there's more than a hundred households on YouTube. It indicates to you uh, the uh, the seriousness of which uh, so many people take this issue. Uh, one of the issues that people have written us about is uh, for questions is uh, Jocelyn, another Upper West Side neighbor, wants to know who's going to monitor, who's going to deal with all these vehicle like bikes all over Riverside Park. James wants to know, shouldn't they all be banished with some regulatory action from Central Park? Isn't that something city legislators can get regulatory as opposed to legislative uh, with parks and all that. Do, do we want? Do you want to see that? Do you support uh, those concerns or that kind of action? What do you think, Sean? I think that, and and I, again, I don't want to be speaking for you, but I think Gail is one of the big proponents of legislation that would have banned uh, motorized transportation in Central Park. Is that right, Gail? All cars. I got them out. Yeah, she got all cars. I personally think that. We shouldn't have uh, 
e-bikes in our parks. Uh, I think it's a place for 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 our kids to be safe. I think we need to have them where they belong, and that's the bike lanes. That's my that's my opinion. Yeah. I mean, uh, Central Park just is about to release a Sam Schwartz study. I haven't read it. I'll be honest with you on what should exist in the park. And I'm hoping that other parks, if it's something that is to be emulated, uh, take seriously. It's in Riverside Park the other day on a bike path, not even uh, a path that is used uh, for anything but walking. I saw a motorcycle. So it's it's really dangerous. It's not just e-bikes, it's motorcycles on literally paths that are not paved in the park. So it's really dangerous. I totally agree with Sean. We should not have things that can go fast, for lack of a better word. Just bicycles and e-assist in the parks. But I, I, I think that there's sentiment. the need for enforcement. Because I remember, Gail, maybe you remember when uh, there was a ribbon cutting around 83rd Street in Riverside <laughs> yes. for the new new lane. And like the bikes went speeding, almost hit us. So... <laughs> Lack of enforcement across the board is a very serious problem. Let me, let me ask you this. Um, um, is there any legislation necessary? Uh, I heard this from Arthur from West 63rd Street that says pedestrians have the right of way no matter what. No matter what you're driving or riding and that when you do not give the pedestrian that right of way, you are violating something. Do you need a law for that? It, it seems incredulous to me that that could even be up for debate. Uh, I thought we were taught that in like third or fourth grade. Maybe I was mistaken. Brad, you have 85 bills pending. Could that be one of the issues? It could be. Uh, you know, the problem about having so many bills, again, it's about prioritizing. And again, uh, Linda knows this all too well. When we enter this crunch time, we really have to pick, you know, the two or three that we want to get across the finish line in each house. So we're going to need your help. And uh, is it, you know, is it licensure? Is it uh, insurance? Is it algorithms? Is it uh, a fee for the delivery uh, riders. Maybe it's all of them. Uh, maybe it's an omnibus bill. Um, uh, Senator Kruger has been a strong ally on the east side, along with Assembly Member Boras and Assembly Member Simone. So um, I, I think um, a lobby day focusing on your priorities. Uh, would be really helpful. And we should build alliances with other members in other parts of the city who are experiencing the same issue. I know this is not just a Manhattan issue. It's definitely a Brooklyn issue too. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure other, of other boroughs that have it as difficult as we do, but we need to, we need to build our allyship so we can... as, I, as I said earlier about a lobby day, often yeah. we pass legislation in a package. So if you all want to pick what bills should be in the package, so it could be four bills, it could be five bills, but we would present this as our and your wish list. And that would like tie it with a bow and wouldn't be difficult for people uh, to understand that these are the priorities. Because there is the excuse, oh, there are 20 bills, we can't sort them out. Why don't we sort them out and say, here are our priorities, and that will go along with um, a lobby day in Albany, and we can also do a virtual lobby day. Sean, there hasn't been a vote uh, uh, in the council on this, has there? Well, why Why are these things not... Uh, uh, You're to Holden's bill? Yeah, and, and in, were there any other bills that were even close to that for... I mean, look, I'm on the bill because I just wanted to get a hearing, right? I think that if we shouldn't get her for trying, and if at a minimum, I think we we want to. I think that by having this discussion at a hearing would actually also add even more momentum and support for what 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 for the the bills in Albany. I think that if we have our hearing on Holden's bill, 
I think that would bring attention to the to the bills that 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 Hoyleman has and that and that Linda Rosenthal has. My you know my colleagues in the state. I think that this bill is far from perfect. I think there are legitimate concerns. For instance, can is DLT an expert in this over the DMV? Probably not. Right. DLT has had some experience uh, with 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 a fixing license plates. For instance, there's a lot of vendor you know vendors, so they have some experience with that. Um, so I do think the bill should get heard at a minimum so that we can have you guys and, and the people be heard and this be a conversation where it could be a, be a megaphone for, for, for the amazing proposals that are in Albany that I think are a lot better than the proposals in the city council right now. Because the truth is the legislature has the power here over the DMV. We don't. Let's make that very clear. And I think the DMV is, is, is a lot more prepared. But again, I'm on the bill because it needs to be heard. Yeah, I, would, I would hope yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. If they do, if we do have a hearing, it would include the resolutions that we have Correct. to support the state legislation. Because I think I have three, at least three on that topic. Yeah, Gail has those resolutions. And if there are any other additional resolutions you need us to, to draft, I'm sure we'd be very happy to do that and bring more attention to, to the amazing bills in Albany. You understand there may be um, some less than enthusiastic uh, uh, a feeling by by many members of the public about having the state carry out another program that is so important to us along the lines of the years that they've worked on the cannabis uh, program to roll that out, which has not exactly been a sterling example. What could possibly go wrong, Steve? Yeah, go wrong, go wrong, go wrong. That's what that's happened. A, that's an anomaly, I must say. And um, it, <laughs> it's it's a disaster, as the governor said, but we are putting in legislation to fix it. So hopefully by the end of the budget, it will be much clearer and there will be powers to agencies that can shut them down. So let's ask each of you two minutes. Give us a reason to be enthusiastic about being able to address this issue which is before our community, and we're counting on the four of you to work and fix this before more damage is done. So I know it's pressurizing. Who's first? Who's bravest? I'll go, go first. Go ahead, Sean. Yeah, Sean, you go. Um, I'll go first because I'll have any. I have nothing up to uh, nothing left to be said afterwards. So I think there's there's a lot of reason for optimism. Uh, everyone. I kid you not, everyone in the Upper West Side has asked me, what are you going to do about those e-bikes, right? And so when the people are leading the conversation on, on, on the, the, the lack of safety, the, the need for there to be plates and registration, it seems like Upper West Side is very united on this issue. And when the people speak in such, when, when, when everybody comes together like that, it really puts pressure on us and it holds us accountable to do the right thing. And so I know that we have amazing legislators in Albany, in Brad Hoyleman and Lin in Linda Rosenthal, in, in, in Gale at the city council. And we're very committed to the issues that are brought to us by Upper West Side. I think we're all united on this issue, as you can see. And I think that as, as, as for as long as that we stay together, uh, I think we'll, we'll, we'll go a long way. So that's, that's the reason to be optimistic. I'm I'm also optimistic because I know that uh, with disaster sometimes comes silver lining, which is the awful fires from the batteries, and so we have had quite a few uh, discussions and legislation passed in the city council. I think I passed about four bills and more pending to stop these god awful batteries that are killing people. And of course, if we have to get the pop wheels, that would help. So that notion to answer your question, Steve of moving faster because you have to get the uh, battery fixed. And when you're doing that, you're also dealing with the bicycle, the rider, the apps, uh, and the delivery people, and of course, people's concern about public safety. So I think there's lots of driving forces. The fact that Sam Schwartz was hired by uh, Central Park Conservancy, hopefully whatever comes out of that will also address both Hudson River Park and Riverside Park. Um, so I know, and the good news is between Janice and other groups that have formed um, to say that this has got to stop, there's a lot of momentum. And I think that I have to really thank the Midtown Community Justice Center because it was an excellent conference with every possible perspective in the room. And they have a whole list of safe riding infrastructure, uh, delivery people suggestions and the apps. So there's good news uh, coming out of this conversation 
Midtown Community Justice Center and just people who are working hard on the issue. Thank you. And I'll oh, go ahead, Lynn. No, no, I was I was going to go first, but I'll go last. Go ahead. Well, I would just say, you know, um, that I'm optimistic because um, we have support now, Steve, from uh, the mayor's office, uh, which has its own um, uh, lobbying effort up in Albany on a number of these bills. And they're going to add this to their agenda uh, before the end of session, I've been assured. Uh, so, so that's going to add another layer to our council members' city uh, advocacy. Secondly, um, we have the app delivery companies recognizing um, that they are responsible and they are getting um, the heat from New Yorkers of all stripes. Um, for example, they support Assemblywoman Rosenthal's bill that, that, uh, and, and mine, uh, among others. So we'll continue to work with them. And then third, uh, public pressure is just building, you know, the, it's, it's every part of Manhattan where you have, uh, an amazing, um, uh, crew of legislators who are all working on this issue in different um, in different components and aspects of the problem. So it's all hands on deck. And I think we're going to see some movement before the end of session. So there's, there's a lot to be optimistic about, including the number of people who are participating in this Zoom. Assembly member Rosenthal. Well, I will wrap it up. And uh, everyone said most of uh, the, the dominant thought on this Zoom, on uh, where people are, are watching. The fact is that we have a great coalition. We have to expand it to include other parts of the city. We also have to get the governor involved. And I think she'd want to be responsive to issues like this where people are being killed, where streets are hazardous to cross, where there is an outcry from the residents of the city. And I think that can be part of our strategy to interest her in this and have her be an ally and a partner in getting this over the finish line. So I'm committed to it. Uh, I think we all are. I think the West Side has some of the best electeds around. Um, and thank you also for doing this and getting us together so we can together come up with the right plan, the right target, and the right strategy to get this done. Well, thanks to all of you uh, folks. Uh, UpperWestSideCoalition.org is our uh, website, or send us an email at UpperWestSideCoalition at gmail.com. If you're interested in starting a block association, reviving one, just learning more about what we're up to, Please be in touch. And of course, we're going to follow up with our elected officials over and over and over until we're able to uh, get something done. So thanks to everyone for participating. Thanks to all of you and uh, have a good night. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Everyone. Bye. Bye.